Okay, some viewers were asking for some pigeon decoy in footage. Well, I finally got the opportunity and the time and decided to see if I could get a few birds. Now, this is a relatively small field, but the farmer has been ringing me, texting me, there's crows, there's pigeons in the barley, can you do something about it? So I told him I would try and get at it on Saturday morning. Of course, it absolutely bucketed down all Friday night. And it was still raining Saturday morning as well as blowing a gale. So I decided, okay, I'll grab the gear, I'll go out, at least I'll make an effort and show the, the farmer that I am trying to help him out. That way, when the field's cut later on, hopefully I'll get some decoying over the stubbles. I'm using my usual little one man pop up hide from Bushware, and I have it nudged into the hedge about. 30 yards or so away from two ash trees in the corner of the field that I know the pigeons like to light in. I'm using my BSA Super 10 that was blue printed by John Bowkip. It's in 0.22 calibre running at about 15 foot pounds of energy which I have on my FAC. I'm using the 15 grain GASB pellets. I have a Nico Sterling 4 to 16 by 44 target master scope with the LRX radical, uh, a Virach silencer on the end of the gun and any other details I usually put in the description below but some people have been asking me for it. I'm sure I sat in the hide for a good 45 minutes waiting for a rainstorm to pass over before I actually set the decoys out. They're just three full bodied fully flocked decoys that I've touched up with paint a wee bit myself. Now before I started I took a wee practice shots at that white dot in the centre of the tree branch there to give me an idea how much wind to allow for and I'm sure the wind was blowing the pellet off to the right a good inch and a half so I just allowed for that by aiming about an inch and a half to the left using the LRX radical. Once I was settled in, it wasn't too long before I got my first opportunity. I'm just going for heart and lung shots here, as the wind's just too gusty for head shots. I had two birds down so I decided to go out and lift them and use them for decoys. Uh, the only problem was there was that much cover around the base of the tree that it was very difficult at times to actually find the birds you'd shot. You sort of had to look for a telltale sign of a puff of feathers as they hit the ground. A lot of the times the wind was been a real pain and you had to time the shot at a point where you had a clear path for the pellet to hit the target. I'd love to say that was a perfectly clean kill but actually when I went to retrieve the bird I found him a little more alive than I expected him but uh, I had to dispatch him myself. Now I actually wasn't expecting the birds to land on the ground uh, but the decoys must be doing a good job because that's what they started doing instead of landing in the tree. This bird was about 20 yards away and I didn't bother allowing for any wind at all and took a nice clean headshot with it. After that I decided to go out and have a wee tidy up and set the birds that shot up as decoys. 
I usually just do this using either a sharp piece of stick or a, a stiff piece of wire up and through the pigeon's chin and just push it into the ground a wee bit and make its head sit up properly. I didn't set this bird out as a decoy because that's the one I had to dispatch myself um, and its head sort of popped off when I rung its neck which I really hate doing but honestly if you're going to shoot you have to be prepared to dispatch any cripples quickly otherwise it's not fair. You need to be quicker than that. Though I did spot these two birds they were about 30 yards away and I still didn't believe I needed to allow as much for wind close to the ground. Aimed about half an inch off and missed. Nothing wrong with that shot. This one was really well tucked up in behind that branch and I waited in the wind to blow a, a clear path for me. Took the shot, but no, hit the branch. Spotted another one on the ground, but it was tucked up in behind a lot of tall weeds. Difficult shot, his head's bobbing up and down, the weeds are moving back and forth in the wind. And yes, you guessed it, I missed. Very frustrating. And I think it was after this, I actually pushed a couple of sticks in the ground at different ranges to shoot at to give me an idea how much wind I actually did need on the ground. And it turned out to be about an inch, which was twice as much as what I was actually allowing for. And no, I'm not stuffing my face with crisps. I actually had a plastic bag over the top of the camcorder to help keep the rain off it. Though a bag of crisps would have went down well by now. Ah, you need to be quicker than that. Hang on a second. He wasn't alone. Now let's see if I can get the wind right this time after shooting at my ground sticks and I'm going to go for the hard shot, not the head. That'll do nicely. And of course when I left the hide to set him up as a decoy 
I spooked a couple of birds out of the tree. No matter how hard you search the tree beforehand, you always seem to miss one or two. He saw something he didn't like. Now when you see birds coming into the tree, don't take your eyes off of them till you see exactly what branch they land on, because they can disappear in among the foliage so easily. I was just about to squeeze the trigger here in a nice easy shot when he flew off. But thankfully, he actually landed on the ground and gave me an even easier shot. Again, I passed up the opportunity for a headshot and went for the shot between the two shoulder blades. And down he went. It looked like a perfect shot and I would have put money on the fact that he was stone dead, except when I went to go out to pick him up, he started moving. But, again, a quick twist to the wrist and dispatched him quickly. I didn't set him out as a decoy because I thought the decoy part room was busy enough as it was and you always want to leave space for incoming birds to land in. I'm really starting to like this high shoulder heart and lung shot. Nowhere near as much flapping about as a head shot. That's another one that won't be in the barley. Oh, that's getting a bit thin looking. Anyway, I've been here from about half eight, nine o'clock this morning and it's now almost three o'clock. So I decided to call it quits, pack up and see about getting something to eat.
Well, the day turned out a lot better than I thought it would, especially in the high winds. I honestly thought I'd just show up, make an effort, and once I find I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn in that wind, I'd go home early. But I've actually managed to put together a half decent bag. Now, I will admit my shooting was anything but perfect, and I did have to dispatch a few birds after the shot, but thankfully all were accounted for except for two, which might have fell in some deep cover where I couldn't find them. Oh, the rucksack, if you're interested, is an army surplus Northern Ireland patrol pack or day pack, which I've added a few extra pouches on. With all my gear gathered up, I headed next home, as I was absolutely starving. I hope the wee wifey's got enough room in the freezer.